If, like myself, you've got an appreciation for Nixie tubes, it's almost certain you'll have discovered Mr. Nixie's website. However, with a name like Nixie Kits, it's geared more towards people who are skilled with a soldering iron. Over the years, I've seen quite a few things on there that I would have liked to have owned, but not to assemble. So therefore, I was thrilled when Mr. Nixie himself contacted me and offered to pre-assemble his kits for review purposes. I'd pay the kit price and he'd do all the hard work. He also said that he got a brand new kit that he was launching on Kickstarter and he suggested that he could send one over as an early prototype. So of course I took him up on his offer and just a few days later received a box containing this, the Iron 9 Nixilizer. It's a spectrum analyzer that uses Iron 9 Nixie tubes. Now there are a few different ways you can send audio into this. Around the back there are line level RCA and 3.5mm stereo headphone input jacks as well as outputs for both, so if desired it can be daisy chained between components. The power is supplied to it via a barrel plug from a 15 volt 2 amp wall wart. On the front from left to right you've got a power switch, there's a gain control for the microphone that's located in the centre, and then you've got a balance and a gain control for those rear inputs. Okay, so I've brought it down here to plug it into my hi-fi, but before I do that, I've just got to reiterate that this is a prototype at this stage. Mr. Nixie or Jürgen has put this one together just for me. I think this is the very first one he's assembled. In fact, after sending this to me, he sent me an email to say he'd noticed there was a, a bit of a bug in the software somewhere. So he'd updated it after that. So this is already kind of an earlier revision. There's a couple of things that I've noticed with this one as well and fed that back to him. And he's already made those changes to make the version that anyone would buy through Kickstarter better than this. First thing is I noticed when you put power into this, and switch it on you'll see at the moment it's responding to my voice hopefully you can see that on the camera but um, this one on the left even when I'm not speaking it's lighting up apparently he hadn't ground the microphone in this one so I mentioned this to him and he's gone back revised the circuitry so that now the microphone is has been grounded but uh, yeah you can see at the moment responding to my voice one way to correct this in this version I've got here is to plug in the RCA cables because that then provides it with a ground. So if I just plug those into the back, you can see now that that one on the left is no longer uh, providing spurious results. But just one other thing I'll mention, there's a LED shining through the bottom of here, a green one. I think there's a yellow one on the left. I mentioned those to him as well. I said, what are those for? Because they're not really lighting the tubes up. He says, ah, yeah, those should really be on the bottom of the circuit board. The idea was to light the base up or something. He's going to use different LEDs as well. Should also mention the microphone on this one. It seems pretty sensitive, but he's getting a new, more sensitive one than this in the final version. Now, obviously, I don't have too much bass in my voice, so it's not really doing much on the left there. But if I give it a clap, you can see they all respond. And if I play some music, it'll err more towards that side than this vocal end here. So let's have a go at that. So yeah, very quick to respond over the microphone, but if you want the most accurate results, you do it through the line input. So if I turn the mic all the way down, I've got the line in in the back here now. So if I press play, it's gonna be coming through the line in. I'll turn the gain up on that. And one thing you can do here, you've got a control to adjust the balance so you can choose whether to focus more towards the left more towards the right or in the center i think most people just leave it in the center but of course it's up to you these are all analog controls they look like there's three positions on here but that's just because of the design on the front in fact one thing i should mention i've had a word with jürgen about the writing on the front i said it was a bit busy there's a bit too much going on in my opinion i gave him some ideas as to what i think would look neater than this uh, much less text much less going on less busy perhaps a black power button rather than a red one on the front and he's already working with those designs so i think if you did buy one of these the front will look different to this but i can't really say for sure best to look on the Kickstarter page to see what's on there. But yeah, it's working fine. So let me give you a bit of a demonstration.
This Nixilizer uses iron 9 tubes, and apparently that's more complicated than using the later iron 13s. The benefit, though, to using iron 9s is that they're easier to find, with the disadvantage being that they often start their glow from the middle, or it would jump to the middle and it wouldn't then return back down to the bottom without a power cycle. Now, this issue was resolved in the Iron 13s with an auxiliary cathode, but to get around it on the Iron 9, Jürgen's circuit drives them at an interrupted voltage of 85 Hz, and this ensures that the glow always starts back at the bottom. Now, of course, all that stuff goes over my head, as does this schematic, and I can see that this is the kind of kit that I really wouldn't enjoy putting together myself. However, I know there are people out there that would, so what I'll do is I'll open it up to give you a better idea of the kind of work that's required. Now, of course, full assembly instructions will be provided, but I would definitely not recommend jumping into this as your first electronics project. You need to be confident of your skills before taking this on. Reading from the Kickstarter page, amongst other things, it states you'll need a soldering station with a fine tip and fine electronic solder, a multimeter, and it also mentions a magnifying glass may be useful. And there are some very fine points in here that look like they would require a very steady hand. But fortunately, this one is also going to be available pre-assembled, so there's no need to break out that soldering iron unless that's something that you really want to do. I really hope there's no one out there taking part in a drinking game where they have a drink every time I say the word Nixie, because if there is, they'll probably have passed out after the end of this section, because I wanted to explain the reason I was sent this by Mr. Nixie is because I've made lots of videos featuring Nixie tubes in the past. In fact, I think the most viewed video on the channel is about a Nixie watch, and then following that one, I made other videos about Nixie watches, Nixie clocks, Nixie calculator, even a Nixie stopwatch. There's probably more things besides. But up until this point, I haven't managed to feature one of these even though I've wanted to because they've always been beyond my financial capabilities. They've always been very expensive. I mean, it is a thing that you don't really need. So to spend a lot of money on it doesn't make too much sense, but it is a beautiful device as well. There's just got to be that balance between what you can afford to spend on something that just looks nice. Now, this, I would say, is the most affordable one of these I've yet seen. I'm not going to say it's cheap, but the most affordable one. You'll have to go and look on the Kickstarter link in the video description text box to see what the price is and how much it costs to get it sent to where you are. But I think uh, looking at it earlier, it works out around about £200 or so, just under if you get it as a kit, just over if you get it pre-assembled. Now, Mr. Nixie himself has made earlier versions of this. There was one a few years ago, and I remember looking at that and thinking, oh, I can't afford that. So I think this one is a lot cheaper, although I can't remember what the previous one was. So I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this video here today, but that is it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.